Chris Hanibarokan at the academic hospital is battling with capacity issues. The CEO, Dr. Ngelelisia, has told the Houting legislature that the facility needs more nurses and clerks, just among other workers. She says the vacancy rate does not meet international standards. Let's speak with the South African Medical Association's Dr. Mvui Simzugwa. Dr. Mzugwa, very good evening to you. Welcome back to News at Prime. How dire is the situation? How dire are conditions at Barra Hospital at the moment? Uh, good evening to you, Tembegle, and to your list, uh, viewers. Thanks for having me. Uh, like you've, said, you've seen in the reports, um, if, if those reports are anything to go by, 909 babies who have died uh, it is quite a lot. And we are honestly gauged by you know, the number of, of babies that die in a country to, so, to show that uh, we are really capable of running a very a, a smooth healthcare system. So the, the condition, as we always put it, is always dire. Like we've been always uh, uh, alerting South Africans that we have a, a serious healthcare crisis in the country. Uh, this is a confirmation of what we've been always uh, saying about what's happening on the ground. I mean, we've uh, had so many of these reports, including the Rahima Musa uh, 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 debacle uh, that was tabled uh, before the nation by our uh, health ombuds. Mm -hmm. And when you read about the, the case of these 909 children who died at this hospital, I think it was over a period of three years, um, they've been classified as avoidable deaths, but not negligent deaths or deaths as a result of negligent behavior. Are we not playing semantics here when you look at the fact that some of these children had no chance? They died of hypothermia, which is easily avoidable. You are quite correct. Um, I'm not understanding why they are uh, playing, uh, 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 you know, with words uh, when they, they, they differentiate these two. Because if you have no, uh, no electricity in the hospital, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, and the generators are not working. Can't you call that negligence? And if you have no uh, dire shortage of, of staff members, you know, or healthcare workers in, in an institution, what do you call that? Because we all know that there's a dire shortage of, of healthcare workers. When you have a broken equipment, when you have dirty hospitals, when you have um, leaking roofs in the hospitals, what do you call that? It, it's negligence. But uh, it, it, people find a way of playing around with words. And what does that mean then for faith in the government, which is responsible for these hospitals? Because when you interview one CEO after the next, one head of a department after the other, they all tell you the same thing, that they and their teams report for duty every morning, every night, hoping to do the best that they can. But until they've got enough doctors, enough nurses, enough porters at a very basic level, the people who are supposed to push or wheel a patient from one section to the other, until all of that is in place and you've got basics such as the everyday medicines, there's only so much they can do. Well, the World Health Organization have already alerted all of us that uh, by 2030, there will be about, they projected about 10 million uh, shortfall of healthcare workers. So it tells you already that uh, while, when we get there, uh, the situation will even be worse in South Africa. Um, there's also, uh, this is compound, compounded by the fact that there's a shortage in terms of the budget. Healthcare budget has been decreasing uh, over time, you know, with 1% and stuff like that. And uh, there's a hope that is being uh, bent about of NHI. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's talked about even in the health summit now. But what, what I can tell you now, uh, uh, is that South Africans are good at having summits and conferences, but you will never, ever taste uh, implementation. That is what is lacking at, the, at, at this time. We've got a second presidential health summit. It is going to yield nothing because uh, it's going to be just a talk show there is nothing to show. I mean, what you've he heard today in the summit was just a glossy picture that was pictured by praise singers of the president and nothing more. Who then do we hold responsible, culpable even, for the multiple failures in the system? And by failures, I mean uh, failures for the patients, 
failures towards the patients, the, the mothers who went into hospital in some of these cases to give birth to perfectly healthy babies only for them to die while in hospital, to the healthcare workers who are, even in some cases we're hearing, having to dip into their own financial uh, resources just to be able to feed some patients. Who do we hold responsible? Well, if you look at the uh, uh, presidential uh, compact, it identified about nine pillars before, now there's ten pillars. But amongst those pillars, there's uh, governance and leadership. And, uh, uh, you know, I can tell you, you know, even today, when we got to that pillar, there were only two paragraphs that were talking about leadership and governance. And that's where the greatest problem lies in healthcare. Uh, we do not have leadership uh, uh, that is going to guide, you know, uh, the delivery of services in the country. We do not have a, a bold president who is going to see that, you know, there's nothing that is happening in the Department of Health. We do not have leadership when it comes to the minister. Uh, we do not have leadership on the ground. I mean, you know very well that in South Chiang and other provinces, there is a, 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 pro, a, a problem of unqualified or quali, uh, 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 qualified or competent uh, CEOs who are running institutions. And, you know, all, all, when we address these issues, all we do is we call a summit. Uh, come five years again, we call another summit. But we don't do anything. We spend about plus or minus five billion of, of taxpayers' money and just talking and eating and talking and sleeping in the hotels, nothing more. Do you think then that the outrage over the situation at Barra will change anything? Until uh, there's a, there are people who are held accountable, like it is happening now with the, with the inquest, uh, that is the main issue. Uh, I think people will understand, because I think as, as organizations, we need to do that exactly to, you know, hold people accountable, civil society, to hold people accountable who are in positions of power, who are supposed to be changing the landscape of healthcare in South Africa, who are not doing it, uh, whatever the reason is. And also the issue of professionalization of the, the health, the healthcare, the, 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 the administration, you know, where we make sure that People that are getting there are professionals, and also we make sure that there is no interference from the level of, of politicians who tend to meddle with uh, uh, administration when they are supposed to do oversight as political aids in those departments. Dr. Mvuisim Zugwa from the South African Medical Association. Good to have your time. Thank you.